I'm going to be you fairly be quick. Bit, so. I was right. expecting all these interviews on a show day. So oh, geez, uh, sorry time. about that. Well, I'll be very fast. That's okay. You know, basically, we just want to kind of cover the new album yeah. coming out and so forth. So, uh, uh, once again, Brett Tully with In, In The Now magazine. Appreciate your time and so yeah, forth. So, no uh, first, we'll start off your headline in M3 tonight. How's that feel? We're not headlining. We're closing the show. You know what? Lita and Winger and Extreme, they're all headliners too. So, and we're all, we all have the same amount of set time. So I don't look at it as headlining, as closing the show to satisfy these fanatical Baltimore fans. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that's the truth. And anywhere else, we would, not be, we would not be closing the show. But in Baltimore, they demand kicks closes the Friday night show. So we do it. Well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you should be closing the, sh the show. I was here last year, and you guys were phenomenal. You should have been closing last year as well. Yeah. So. Blackie wanted to close the show, and we said, okay. We did. We, we just we don't. I, I recall. Hey, you guys put on a phenomenal performance. Nice. So uh, now, is this the first show for 2014 for you guys? No, we just got off the Monsters of Rock cruise. Excellent. How was yeah, that? That was great. That's. I mean, if you ever get a chance, you got to do that one because that's that's a four day drunk on a boat with every every band you could ever <laughs> imagine, and it, it's cool. It's intimate. I mean, you're you're with the bands and the people are all together all the time, and it's um uh, it's a hoot. Well, that's fantastic. So uh, 2014 shaping up to be a great year for you guys. Obviously, yeah. you got the new album coming out. It's been about two decades since you guys actually put out some new music. So what what brought about that? Why, after two decades, right. this, did this, you this, decide? This is my stock answer here. <laughs> We've, we have put out new music, but just not as kicks. Uh, Funny Money, my other band, has put out like four CDs that, that I've done a lot of writing on. Brian's done a lot of writing in Rhino Bucket. Uh, Ronnie's done a lot of writing in Blues Vultures. So we've been writing just not as a band, not as Kix. So, um, you know, when Kix got flushed out of the picture about 1995, we all had to go off and do other things. So that, that's what we did. I started teaching. All the other guys had to go do what they had to do to survive. And little by little, when we started doing these reunion shows, it just kept growing and getting bigger and bigger and getting invited to, like, Rocklahoma, which kind of kicked the whole thing off again. And it just kept, it gets bigger and more dates every year. So when we released a couple years ago, we did a live DVD CD uh, for Frontiers Records called Live in Baltimore. And they sort of suggested a new studio album, which is what got the whole thing churning. We really weren't expecting to do a new album. We were just going to continue making records on our side projects. And we thought, well, let's see what we have. Let's see if we can put some material together that we could call Kicks. And we wanted to get Taylor Rhodes involved. We thought he would be the perfect guy because he co-produced Kicks albums, he co-written Kicks songs. We thought he would keep us in the right direction and keep keep us sounding like Kicks and satisfy the fans. So Taylor finally agreed to get on board. We all got together and took 40 songs and knocked them down to 15 and worked on those 15 and made a record. So that's kind of the, the whole writing process with Kicks this, this last time around is you guys just kind of got together and took all these songs and... Yeah. Fantastic. Yep. Well, that's great. So, uh, well, it's pretty unusual. You guys actually have four of the five original members of yep. Kicks. You know, 80s bands and so forth coming out. Usually, there might be one or two original members. So, how'd you guys pull that off? I mean, the four of you coming well, together like us that. Four always really got along great. It was it was just the fifth member that used to drive us all crazy. So that's why he's not involved anymore. <laughs> and uh, making a record without him was was a little challenging. We didn't know if we'd be able to pull it off. But I I, I think fans are going to be pleasantly surprised. Fantastic. Yeah. A classic Kicks record. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. So now you guys have signed on with Loud and Proud Records, yes. uh, Tom Lipsky. And so how'd that come about and how's that going? Actually, Mark had contacted Tom and Kicks' uh, last record was on CMC, which Tom headed that label. So when Tom got word that we were, we were looking to maybe move away from Frontiers because they were having some legal problems and we wanted to... Uh, to hook up with Tom again because we, we thought that he would be great for us and it would be an American label they're, they're hot with the winery dogs and other bands that they got so we thought that would be the perfect uh, shot for us so Tom heard some of the demos that we were making at the time and he, he got interested so little by little we, we connected and signed the deal well, that's great. So now when the record comes out, can we expect a proper tour from Kicks? I mean, are we going to go ahead and tour the world, or what's going on with that? You know, that's going to depend on the demand. I mean, if it if it would get airplay in, say, Chicago or Texas or wherever the hell it's going to get airplay, that's where we'll go. Um, these days, i got a feeling it's going to be mostly XM radio. I don't see mainstream radio really jumping on it. Sure. So it's going to depend on the demand. It's, it's where We're going to go where the record takes us.
Excellent, excellent. So, what about like, uh, have you guys toured Europe lately, or have you thought no. about the festival scene, or is there any you know demand what? for that? Never, or? We never really had much of an impact in the UK. We did one tour in the UK where we did three clubs. The Marquee was one. We did a, a show with Ingve, and then we did this little dump out in the country, and that was that was our stint in the UK. So it's not like. Uh, we're, we sold a lot of records over there. We've never been to Germany or France or any of those places. We went to Japan three times and did very well over there. I was going to say Asia is usually a yeah. big market. Yeah. So a any thoughts of going back there anytime soon? Like I say, if there's a demand, if, if, if they're selling records over there and they want kicks to come to town, we'll do it. But there's got to be a demand. No point in going over and shoving yourself down somebody's throat that doesn't want you or care about you. Absolutely. If you don't mind, I'm going to dip back into the history a little bit of the band. Just a little and, bit. Just a little bit, a tiny bit. So now if I were to ask you, you know, some of the favorite bands you might have toured with in the past, do you kind of have one that kind of sticks out? That you oh, said? that's easy. Yeah, that's easy. I, I don't One of my, my favorites, I guess because the Rat Tour was our first. That was the first arena tour that we were ever on. That one was special. We finally felt like we had gotten out of the club. We were on a tour bus. We were in arenas every night. We were, you know, it was like the big time. We felt like we'd finally gotten to the big time. So I'd have to say that first rat tour was pretty amazing. So how does that news of uh, Stephen Piercy leaving the band just yesterday, was it, huh? Oh, he'll be back. They I, fight all I the time. I was going to say, I hope so. Him and Bobby, yeah, huh? Yeah, they, yeah. they fight all the time. Jeez. So uh, I'll ask you it. You might not answer it. All right. Who's the worst band <laughs> that you toured with? The worst band we ever toured with? Triumph. Really? Triumph sucked. Not, not that they sucked playing, they sucked as people. They were assholes. They did not want us on that tour. They went out of their way to, to make life uncomfortable for us. Um, and we would play their areas and they would, they would squeeze us and their sound checks and, and the people hated us. And they had a lot to do with it, so fuck them. <laughs> I can quote you on that? Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's great. So uh, l let me ask you, is there a moment that stands out, most embarrassing moment on stage? You're on stage, your mind ever go blank, or you're singing a song, and you're like, shit, I well, forget the lyrics. The that, that, yeah. I mean, I'm hard to embarrass. I don't really know. I don't really know. Them. I, I mean, I've busted my pants and my ass is hanging out. I don't care. <laughs> when you're up on stage, you're, you, you, feel, you feel invincible. You, you, I mean, nothing, nothing can bother you. That's your... That's your it's your space. Area, yeah, yeah and, that's and, great. Well, you show it, too. You're a great front man. I mean, you really entertain the crowd. So, you know, I, I suppose it's probably hard to embarrass you. It's very hard to embarrass me. How about most gratifying moment in your career, so to speak? On stage or just in general? In your career, in the music career, in general. I think the first trip to Japan when we got off the plane, I know with about five or six hundred little Japanese kids holding up Kicks albums saying, we love Kicks, we love Kicks. And this is a country it took us 16 hours to get to. That really blew us away. Oh, that's that great. gives me chills just thinking about it again. That that's, was amazing. That's awesome. So when you're off tour, what are you doing? I'm home. I'm, yeah. a, I'm, a, I'm a homebody. I'm home with my family. Um, love sports. I love sitting and, and enjoying my family. Summertime, I sit out by the pool and drink beer. Wintertime, I watch football and drink beer. I'm, I'm home. So you're a Baltimore Ravens fan? Ravens fan, but more a Redskins fan. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. So, well, uh, let me ask you, uh, nowadays, is there any uh, artist out there today that you listen to? You Love know? the Winery Dogs. Yeah. They're amazing. Saw them on, on the, the Monsters of Rock Cruise, and I've, I've had their CD. But to see them live and to, to perform that music as well as they did really blew me away. Um, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of new bands that I like, but um, I can't remember the names of them because I don't have my iPod with me. <laughs> Fun, that's a great band. Fun. I mean, for a pop Fun? for a pop band, they are amazing. Never heard Hailstorm. of Fun. Hailstorm, great band. Great band, absolutely. So, well, that leads me to my last question, and my last question is. The last song that you heard, whether it be on your iPod or Pandora or whatever it might be, what was the last song you heard? During the photo shoot last night, we did a photo shoot with Mark Weiss, which took forever. Um, some ZZ Top song. I don't know. I don't remember the name of it, but uh, ZZ Top. It was ZZ and, Top, huh? And, yeah, love ZZ Top. That's great. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Is it okay if I get a quick photo? Absolutely. Is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. So.